Boom! Hello! Well, that's a new one, isn't it? Hello. I'm Thundercloud, here at Seahorse Medicine Cafe at the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame, washing away the garbage, leaving rainbows after rains on the 15th of May. Yeah, my mum calls me James, not just on the 15th of May, but usually. And there's Sky. Hi, Sky. Hi. Hey. I'm uh, high, in the, high in the sky. Hi. Hi. Yeah, she's got a microphone on mute, but she, trust me, she said hi. Mm. Yeah. That's right, because now we've got our own little lapel microphones. We've, um, I can mute out everyone around here and you can just hear me and whoever else is up here at the time, which is a great thing. I've been uh, drawing and I've recently drawn my 58th portrait here at the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame for the Portrait Gallery. Uh, it's Shaw Nielsen, John Shaw Nielsen, well, a poet born in 1872 and died in 1942. But so he was a contemporary of Banjo Patterson and Henry Lawson and all of those great poets of Australia. But not so well known. But all the same, a very good poet, a lyric poet too. So it was all often rhymed and mostly rhymed and metered. This is his most famous poem. I'm going to do it. I did do it last night in Chillin' Tuesday, but I'm going to do it again because it is just such a, a lovely poem. It's called The Orange Tree. The young girl stood beside me. I saw not what her young eyes could see. A light, she said, not of the sky, lives somewhere in the orange tree. Is it, I said, of east or west, the heartbeat of a luminous boy who with his faltering flute confessed only the edges of his joy? Was he, I said, born to the blue, in a mad escapade of spring, ere he could make a fond adieu to his love in the blossoming? Listen, the young girl said. There calls no voice, no music beats on me, but it is almost sound. It falls. This evening on the orange tree. Does he, I said, so fear the spring, ere the white sap too far can climb? See in the full gold evening all happenings of the olden time? Is he so goaded by the green? Does the compulsion of the dew Make him unknowable but keen, asking with the beauty of the blue. Listen, the young girl said, for all your hapless talk you failed to see, there is a light, a step, a call, this evening on the orange tree. Is it, I said, a waste of love, imperishably old in pain, moving as an unaffrighted dove under the sunlight or rain? Is it a fluttering heart that gave too willingly and was reviled? Is it the stammering at a grave, the last word, word of a little child? Silence! The young girl said, oh, why will you talk to weary me? Plague me no longer, for I am listening like the orange tree. It's cool, eh? Like a really lovely end. You know, just a beautiful poem. It's really, yeah. Yeah, he, he's, it's like his, his questions are sort of like they're irre irrelevant. They're easily sort of, you know, 
he hasn't thought through his questions or anything. He's like, he's like, yeah, she's just like, she, all she's, he's not interested. She's just like, I just want the silence. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I just want the silence. And you're just making, you've got like all this chattering in your head. But what I did notice about this, these, a lot of uh, Shaw Nielsen's poems, he has this, like smatterings of colour all through them. So you've got the, the born into the blue, the white sat too far can climb, the gold evening goaded by the green, the beauty of the blue and the orange tree, of course. Now, the next one here I've got is uh, In the Dim Counties. It's a bit of a love poem. In the dim counties, we take the long calm Lilting, no haziness, sequel or psalm. The little street wenches, the holy and clean, live as good neighbors neighbor, live under the green. Malice of sunbeam or menace of moon, piping shall leave us no taste of a tune. In the dim counties, the eyelid, eyelids are dumb. To the lean citizens, love cannot come. Love in the yellowing, love at the turn, love, oh, the cooing lip, how should he burn? The little street wenches, the callous unclean, could they but tell us what all the gods mean? Love cannot saber us, blood cannot flow in the dim counties that wait us below. Mm, an interesting piece of writing there. The next one here is called The Eleventh Moon. Twas in the eleventh moon I went wool gathering in the dim. Near by me was a lover lad and the sweetness was on him. Lightly his eyes went to the east and he with joy was dumb. His sweet love walked a miracle out of the moonlight come. Oh, but he was the fine lover with a lover's thirsting eye. When two hearts beat, the tune is sweet and knows not how to die. Her laugh, it was the rainbow's laugh, delicious to the land, and she gave to him for close loving her little silken hand. Her face was made of summer thought, Joined with the giddy spring, gently I said, Oh, heart, she is too heavenly a thing. The moon did seem as music spilled upon her spotless gown, and at her height of happiness the summer tear came down. Night and the silence, honey wet, the moon came to the full. It was a time for gentle thought and the gathering of the wool. So, and I've got another one, one more from Shaw Nielsen here. And this is called Flight of the Wary. Your feet have been made for the fairies. Your 17 sorrows are there. The moonlight has been with the sunlight. And both have misgoverned your hair. You love not the noise of the city. You love not the scent of the sea. And oh, you are weary, how weary. And the world is so weary with me. You cannot go out to the blossom. You cannot contend in the play. I call you the little white maiden. The moon that is out all the day. The lights in the leaves are of scarlet, the colour that comes to redeem. The winds are all painted with honey, and we can escape in a dream. In the moods of unmeasured magenta, the sun has apparelled the day. The leaves are the words in a fable or tears that come out in a play. Oh, you with a year to a sorrow, the cynical summer and spring shall both be ashamed of their dancing, and you shall hear many birds sing. 
Oh, we have been sorry and soiled by the low living scent of the sea. Come and let us escape in the scarlet, and you can be wary with me. The flowers shall have all the sweet voices that ever came into the air, ear. And spring as a mourner shall listen, and summer shall save us a tear. Out there in beloved October, then shall we anoint for a king, some little old desolate dreamer who had not the passion to sing. The wind shall be sweet as the kisses that come when a maiden is kind. The dews out of heaven shall hasten and open the eyes of the blind. The silence shall speak and the ears of the deaf shall be shaken with sound. There shall be a forest and lovers shall make it the holiest ground. The sunlight shall be with the moonlight and leave the delight on your hair. The birds of the forest shall journey and sing the sweet hymns for you there. The lakes shall be many and gentle, the water birds holy and wise shall, shall put the grief out of your shoulders and pull the pain out of your eyes. Our God shall be drowsy and think out his thoughts like a beautiful tree, and you shall be weary. How weary with all that is weary to me. Mm, sure, Nielsen. Okay, what have I got for you now? The next thing I've got is a few things that I've written this week. Not this joke, though. How do leopards change their spots? <laughs> I need to put in some canned laughter here. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. this is a goat one now i had a lot of alliteration happening this week so there's a bit of a i guess an alliteration tongue twister <coughs> i was sitting pondering all about goats <coughs> when the clicker disappears do goat seat remotes <coughs> sail in boats where goat hair coats each Porridge made of oats. The goats swim in moats, write notes and quote goat quotes. Yeah, quote goat quotes. Whatever floats their boats. That's that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, what else have I got for you? The old oh, Eagle Day. I wonder if I can um, even read this out for you now because I haven't got it written down. Eagle Day. Well, that's, that's for later. I, I will get Eagle Day for you. Uh, the man who lived in a hut. Yeah, this is a lot of hut, 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 hut. Pretty dumb, really. There once was a man who lived in a hut, which was built from bamboo that he had hand cut. He loved playing golf and boy could he putt after drinking the juice of one coconut. And swinging from resting his arm on his gut, improved his handicap and got out of the rut, became a professional and made the cut. That's that. That's pretty much it. Yep. More canned laughter required there, I think. Yeah, lots of laughter. Yeah, we'll put lots of laughter. Um, ooh, okay. A thunderclouds are atomic theory of, like, energy motion. Will I do that now or will I get sky up? All right, you're next, okay? What I did do, I did find... Uh, a very old copy of my last in Nimbin book. It's actually, I thought I lost it and I, and I haven't, and I'm really happy to have found that. But I'm not, so I'll read out of that instead. Random one. Oh, boundaries stop and boundaries bind. Boundaries make actions crimes. A bond is a bondage. A ransom on you. Slaves are in bondage in borders. Too. It's like, this is about boundaries, just a few little writings about boundaries. Oh, this is defence, keeping the doggy and shopping the refugee, stopping the refugee running from sin. This is defence, 
an imaginary line. In the sand is a border, and this land is mine. Without defence, de dogs could be free. Without de border, we could help refugees. Mm, that's something yeah, written a fair while ago. Here's another one. Machine food. Fruit Loops, Kellogg's Nutrigrain, Frosty Flakes, your brain. Jam on toast with margarine and open up with Heinz baked beans. Strips of pig and battery eggs that just fills your legs. Big Mac juice running down your chin, super size, not healthy slim shoot. Three sugars in a cup of tea and Tim Tams while watching TV. Pack of chips washed down with coke. It's a little wonder some people don't choke. Home from work, drink six beers to forget the grind, the drudge and tears. Work all week so you can save for food that puts you in a grave. Lollies, mints, licorice, chocolate in the Hershey's kiss, cholesterol from so much crap. It's little wonder you're like that. Sitting on your backside all day, all the muscles waste away. I'm enjoying my life, so you say. But hedonism means you can't go with your kids and play. They are slow, just like you eating the shit that others and you do too. Ooh, it's your choice or not to be obscene. I think I'm just going to eat a mandarin. Mm. That was written like in, yeah, probably wouldn't write something like that these days because it's kind of a bit derisive um, of, of people. I would more focus on like the health aspects, but that was 2017 when I was a little bit less mature. So, hey, we all grow up. Mmm, labels. Labels, oh, yeah. Labels causing separation, male, female, cause frustration, eshe, hippie, black and white. Separation, hmm, it's not really right. Just, just one. Just one word, one action, just one man or woman, just one moment, one decision. Ask, just one question. Just is everything. Just us, just as one, just ice, just ice rings, just one dealer, just one profiting, just one life skating on thin ice. Is there any justice or is it just us? Justice on ice, just us, not nice, just not nice. Just mandatory reporting of ice, no justice, just your kids, they need protection just taken away, not just ice, just a medicated mummy, no justice. Just ice. Just legalised drugs would be nice. Just harm minimised. Just legalised. Is it just ice? Is it just us? Is there any justice? It is unjust. Just in prohibition. Justice is unjust. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Someone. Yeah. I look at it, and when I when I look at it, and I was like, oh, it's not a great poem. But actually, when you get into it and you read it out, it comes up all right, really. Yeah. It's one of those ones that sort of needs to be spoken. Mm. Ooh, yeah. So, um, no, this one was interesting. This was Harm Haiku, written after watching the police handcuff someone in Nimbin and um, who was... Um, and just walk him off down the street for like smoking weed or something like that. Her arm twisted around, handcuffed tight and dragged away. Harmless healing herb. Mm. Yeah. Simple and effective. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay, Sky. You better push your button. 
Right, you turned on now? Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> Poems. Poems round the corner, poems round your head, in your breakfast, in your bed, the wonders I am led. Ah, playful words and playful minds, telling stories, emotions said, wandering, wondering, pondering, what have I said? Ding! A spark within I find, a light within my mind. Soothing souls with words of gold. Hmm. The words they steep, then they take the leap. From in my head to words I've said. Splat upon the paper. Colours speak, feel so deep. Raw emotions as they weep. <laughs> it's great. Oh, I love it. Mm. Mm. Really nice. I like, like not nice. It's lovely. It's actually whimsical. Mm. And when you read the river, it's always yeah, pretty mm. or something whimsical. Um, now, this one, which I've sort of. Okay, so all, all in balance. So I've sort of just been trying to fix it up just a second ago, so <laughs> I'll see how it goes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's called All in Balance. All in Balance, I'm told. A little bit of new with a, with a bit of old. A little bit of warmth with a bit of cold. A little bit of murder with a bit of saviour. A little bit of kind with a bit of torture. A little bit of rape with a bit of loving. A little bit of damage with a bit of healing. They say you have to take just a bit with a bit of giving. Yes, a little bit of science with a bit of natural living. Don't be extreme, they say. A little bit of junk with a bit of clean. A little bit of fat with a bit of lean. A little bit of cancer with a bit of health. A little bit of struggle with a bit of wealth. A little bit of life with a, with a long time dead. Oh, when will it all end? <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's that one. <laughs> yeah. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, well I'm back. Uh, I, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this one that I shared online, and um, I guess it's because it's uh, <clears throat> last night was the budget, the federal budget. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get as a small oh, business, as a small you can turn it on so you can, if you want to talk. Um, as a small business operator, yeah, I get a whole three hundred and twenty-five dollars uh, energy rebate. They might as well just spit in my face. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, and I don't take any other like welfare from the government at all, zero, zip, zilch, but I pay shitloads of tax. And so, yeah, it really is like being spat in your face. So particularly the biggest thing is the fact that the GST threshold for small business hasn't risen from $75,000 and it should be well with bracket creep well over $150,000 now. This is the tax poem and it was uh, uploaded by well, author unknown, uploaded by someone called Akpata Francis Adi Noye. But um, yeah, taxi's land, taxi's wage, taxi's bed in which he lays, taxi's tractor, taxi's mule. Teach him taxes as the rule. Taxi's cow, taxi's goat, taxi's pants, taxi's coat, taxi's ties, taxi's shirt, taxi's work, taxi's dirt. Taxi's chew, taxi's smoke. Teach him taxes are no joke. Taxi's car, taxi's grass, tax the roads he must pass. Taxi's food, taxi's drink, tax him if he tries to think. Taxi's sodas, taxi's beers, if he cries, taxi's tears. Taxi's bills, taxi's gas, taxi's notes, 
tax his cash. Tax him good and let him know after taxes he has no dough. If he hollers, tax him more. Tax him until he's good and sore. Tax his coffin. Tax his grave. Tax the sod in which he lays. Put these words upon his tomb. Taxes drove me to my doom and when he's gone we won't relax. We'll still be after the inheritance tax. Mm. Yeah, pretty ac very accurate actually, like, yeah, totally accurate. Mm. And, and for what? What do they do? They, they have sex with dogs, politicians and bureaucrats. That's, well, that's my opinion and I'm allowed to have an opinion. Mm. <laughs> I don't care if I piss them off. Sometimes you've got to say what you think and it allows you to. That's the brilliance of poetry. It's cathartic. You know, and it's like you get to say what you need to say and, and, and you get it out and it's like, okay, move on. Did I, I told you about the man who lived in the heart, didn't I? Yeah, well, I told you about him before. Thunderclouds theory of energy motion. That was the one I was going to do. Have you heard of the atomic theory of life? There are protons and electrons representing good times and strife. But call me a neutron, I'll remain unaffected by emotional programming of how I ought to be directed. There's ups, downs, lefts, rights, all part of the whole. However, neutrons stay neutral, remain, maintain self-control. Sometimes there's silence, other times thunder claps. But no need to be affected by others' emotional crap. As a neutron, I have absolutely zero fucks to give. I am not a negative electron nor a proton positive. Yeah, that was written last week, four days ago actually, this week. Now, there's another one here, Winds of Change, which I've recorded and put it to some music, uh, uh, a bit of a song. And uh, the song is... Uh, well, I, I need to announce this because I need to tell you what's the name of the song. The song is called, it's a free beat uh, by someone called Syndrome on YouTube and it's a Mac Miller type beat, X jazz piano type beat, it is what it is. And that's the name of the beat. And ready, I'll cross over to the song now. Well, this is one... I wrote earlier in the week, put it to this hip hop beat I found on YouTube, call it the Winds of Change. Out of the mist of sand blowing in the desert wind, rode this stranger. Hospitality to all was normal, nobody suspected any danger. Hold on. Tea was served in the best china cups and the bread was broken. The whole family gathered around to listen to the quietly spoken man dressed in black jean shirt, black vest, boots and black hat. What he was saying made a lot of sense and no one noticed the cat more about the cat later but what the man in black was saying on this day you celebrate the holy one in the temple and are praying for forgiveness and praying for peace however faith and belief make you victims of the world and of the holy one leading to grief cat was attentive, walked over and rubbed itself on the man who said, each being is a soul experiencing life as a tree, as a cat, or as a human, with each soul a spark and perspective of the 
be great and responsibility for the experience that each own mind creates. He finished his tea, bread and thanked them. And as he walked away, said, you can switch into billions of parallel realities any time of day. The wind blew and the sand swirled around in patterns on the ground. And everyone was left thinking, holy spiritual insights are profound. Holy spiritual insights are profound. The cat walked over and rubbed itself on the man. that all right so that was not a bad song hey yeah <laughs> yeah did you like that all right we'll put in some canned laughter oh i meant some canned cheering <laughs> mm. um. <laughs> all right look I've got, um, here's one, with, there's another alliteration one rhyming with ak, ak. Um, hmm, it's a, it's a four, it's a four liner, a quatrain. A duck learnt to speak and the first thing it said was both fucking suck rhyme and I don't want to be called a duck. I'll change the U to an I and then I'll rhyme with a sick. Also lick, prick and wick and known widely as a dick. Yeah, of course. Mm. If the duck changed its eye, U to an eye, it would be a dick, wouldn't it? Yeah. Now, the blue whale, I had to, I sort of like, this is sort of one I didn't really finish. I got too tired and fell asleep. And it just sort of ends. And it would had to, it, had, was, a, it was prompted by prompted prose. It was like, take the like point of view of an animal. <coughs> I better translate that, hey. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to relate an unusual tale of telepathic communication with a blue whale. So I will translate the words in my head into English so you understand what it said. We are the whales and we hold the records of the halls of our menti, the Akashic records. Story of the planet and all that you do with our sonar, we intimately know every one of you. We hear all you say and we read all your thoughts. We even enjoy watching your football and sports. Our memories of the planet are two million years. We know when you laugh and all of your fears. Your spears nearly made us all disappear. Now your pollution is a bad problem here. Plastic tires and that great ocean garbage patch. Plus, overfishing and how many fish you catch. Hmm. Yeah. Here's something really, really, really interesting for you, right? That of all of the plastic pollution in the ocean, the Philippines is responsible for about 30% plus of it. Wow, hey? Mm. Interesting. That's just a, a thing. All right, have I got another one for you? Yeah, well, I, there once was a woman, did I tell you about Eileen? Well, she, 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 the lady with one leg shorter than the other, she leaned. Yes, once, yes. I did. There once was a woman named Eileen who discovered something great with new shoe soles from the podi podiatrist. She changed her name to, I'm straight. Yeah, yeah. That that no, that was inspired by the joke. Yeah, what do you call a, a woman with one leg shorter than the other, Eileen? Yeah, mm, like the man with no no feet. 
You call him Neil. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, man with a shovel on his back, yeah. And a few rabbits up his ass, then he's Doug Warren. <laughs> mm. So this man told me this is a it's more a, a prosaic parable kind of thing. A man told me when he came back from a far distant village in the Himalayas in a valley surrounded by eight mountains that the people who live in this village say this. There are people who have to conquer all eight mountains in order to be satisfied and to have knowledge and to understand. And there are people that achieve peace and the necessary knowledge by looking at the one mountain under which they live. Both roads are passable. That's that, yeah. Mm. Now, tree hugger. This one, see, last week I was up there in Nimbin, Nimbin for the Mardi Gras and I, I got to thinking because I was up there and it was the Mardi Gras and it was the launch of the uh, Out There book by Goff and Marion and her partner Quentin. A wonderful book. I'll put the link underneath here because you should buy it. It's a, a pictorial history of Nimbin with 15 hours of historical audio recordings of these old hippies and Nimbin people telling the story of Nimbin. Uh, uh, I'm also in it too, so <laughs> there's a bit of a ring in there. But um, hey, that's cool. And I, so I got thinking, you know, like hippie, because people like think of me as a hippie. And I, I sort of, I don't, know, I don't know, I never really thought of myself as a hippie. But anyway, but I know like that, that that's what people think of me because it's just how I am. But this is how it came out. <clears throat> you know what's odd, what's strange, what's weird? A lot of people think that I am and label me a hippie. And although I know I have dreadlocks and a beard and I'm an artist, a poet, lived in Nimbin, smoked weed and I'm trippy, they could be right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a degree in environmental science. I'm an Aquarius. I meditate, do yoga, eat shrooms, veggies, nuts and fruit. I have anarcho-capitalist tendencies, espouse non-compliance, embrace peace and passion and love. To root, not shoot. I like that line. <laughs> like I get it, but it's the whole label thing. It seems so restrictive. As all of the above, I don't want to be limited or labelled. As labels carry connotations which become inevitably predictive, then datafied, stratified, digitalised, graphed and tabled. As an archetypal hippie, which I can't change that, I'm just being me, with the aforementioned traits all just part of my trip, through life to grow better each day and achieve self-mastery because that's just my healthy obsession. I'm not aiming to be hip. I love partaking of creation and I share this information that every living human purpose is to make and to create. But fear is the killer of a lot of people's new creation. However, every living man and woman has the potential to be great. A hippie or not, it doesn't bother me as a hugger of trees. Trees say it's a human thing and we don't call each other names. We don't even have birds, butterflies or bees, let alone hippie, thundercloud, or as your mum calls you, James. Mm hmm. Their holy spiritual insights are profound. Yeah. yeah. And when you put it, <laughs> it really are. I really, like I find like often you put it into the perspective of, of something that's not human. So you take it out of that ethnological ethnocentrism, human perspective. And then when you look at it from like a, an animal's perspective, really simple, and it's like, man, those humans are really dumb. Oh, God, like, 
Like, look at those fences as they fly over them. If you're a bird, right? It's like, there's fences. Like, what are they? Huh? And it's like, yeah. So that's like putting it into perspective as, perspective as a tree. How would a tree think of it? And it wouldn't even have a name for that. It would just like, yep, it just is what it is. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, and I, I guess look, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. Um, that's that's the est. Oh no, no, there's one more here for you. <laughs> good on you and good on me. Good on everyone. Whatever good may be, <laughs> because we're like you know you get uh, how are you like not bad. Not bad. It's always they say it with the same intonation. It's always like, oh, not bad. There's a, there's a sort of a like to it. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, let's begin again. Good on you. Good on me. Good on everyone. Whatever good may be. Because bad are you. Bad am I. Whatever good and bad is from the perspective of the sky. See, putting it in the perspective of the sky, it is like there's like there's no good or bad, is there? In the sky, laughter brings <laughs> tears, joy can make me cry. You yeah, see, the two opposites: laughter brings tears, joy can make you cry. Courage overcomes fears, everything will die. It's true. Acceptance heals a heart, gratitude does too. Forgiveness lets go of the anger in you. Thanks for all the trials and the daily smiles. But it's not the destination, it's the journey of many miles and trials. Mm. And trials was added at the end, like ad lib. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's the Stamets stack that's doing it to me. I've started getting a bit more writing again. Mm. Yeah, getting the words back in my head. Yeah. The Stamets stack, yeah, look it up. It's. The Stamet stack, yeah, it's um, lion's mane, niacin, and one other kind of mushroom, yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, thanks for joining us. Now, don't forget, um, we've got coming up, oh, what have we got coming up? We've got that fella, Ash Grum Grumwog. He's coming on the 26th, on the 23rd of Jaloon, Jaloon, I don't know. June, yeah. The 23rd of June, we've got Ash Grumble coming to the Australian Poetry Hall of Fame. It's a Sunday evening. So get your tickets now because they're going to sell out. They're already like selling like hot cakes. Yeah. Because it's really cold up here and hot cakes sell really well in Gyra. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. And um, don't forget there's the Australian Poetry Film Contest. Yes, the links are in the description. And if you want to send money, you're quite welcome to send money or XRP or Bitcoin or uh, cryptocurrency. The links are all down below anyway. Um, lots of love. And we'll catch you next Tuesday. And